Hey there, Steve Gamash with another Chef Knives to Go quick look product review. And what we have this time is the, excuse my pronunciation, uh, Tsunihiza Aus 10, AUS 10 Damascus Guto 240 millimeter knife. So I've just, in this batch I've been doing videos here, I've just had three different knives from this maker with three very different characteristics. Materials, look, thickness, um, just a finish, all kinds of different styles here. So this is the third one of these three that are all quite different. So this one is a thin, uh, kind of a laser style a Guto, quite a bit different than the one I just finished doing. Um, this is a whole different uh, style. So very interesting, a lot of different things coming out of this maker. So what this is, is a multiple layers of soft stainless and probably some nickel in there cladding. You can see there's a uh, Damascus pattern as it's ground down, and then they've acid etched this, hence the makes the layers pop with the different cladding materials, and then the coarse steel there has that gray kind of uh, etch on it. So it's a very striking knife. Again, it's thin, light. It does have a little bit of flex to it, as you might suspect. It's a very thin blade, but that's going to crank the performance up quite a bit. Um, so this has a core cutting edge steel of AOS, or AOS 10 stainless. The heat treats about 60 Rockwell on that core steel. <clears throat> and again, you've got the uh, stainless cladding, multiple layered cladding on it. The weight and dimensions can vary a little bit from knife to knife. This particular one is 139 grams or 4.9 ounces. The edge length is about 248. So this is a pretty big knife. It's almost 250. So it's just under 10 inches of cutting edge. So this is a pretty good sized knife, as I mentioned. Uh, the overall length is almost 400 millimeters. And then uh, I measure the spine thickness because this is a good example of a distal taper uh, in action. So uh, I measured the spine thickness at the back about 1.65 and then I measured it halfway down at 1.5 and then I measured it a couple inches from the end it might be a little hard to tell, but it starts thinning down. And a couple inches from the end, maybe about right here, it's about 1.25, and then it just keeps getting thinner as you go. It's not a whisper thin, crazy thin tip, but it's quite thin at the tip. And then here's the choil or the back of the blade shot. I'm going to bang my camera lens here. <laughs> the handle's a little longer. But thin blade overall and fairly thin at the edge as well. Blade height is... 50.7 on this example, so it's fairly tall. Handle is a very nicely done octagonal ambidextrous uh, wa, or Japanese handle, with um, walnut, looks to me to be walnut with a maple ferrule. This has very nice coloring and grain to the walnut. It's a very pretty handle. And you can see the uh, maple handle. It almost looks like it could really be either maple or some kind of laminate as well. But anyway, either way, it's a nice color combination. Fit and finish is very nicely done on this handle. Um, they've got a pretty good glue-up job where that goes into the tang into the handle there. Always check that to make sure there's no cracks or crevices in there and seal that up if you find any. Um, as we said, the blade is pretty thin, actually quite thin with some flex. It's very light. Um, that's under five ounces, folks. That's a big blade. So this is very, very light. Uh, let's get our beauty shot here. And then, uh, obviously, I said fit and finish is quite good. So here's a close-up of the pattern. Every knife's going to be unique. There's some laser engraved kanji on the right side of the blade. And here is the left side of the blade. There's no markings on this side, but we'll show you that as well. Again, every knife will be unique. So they've done a pretty good job of relieving the corners of the spine and relieving the corners of the choil. Out of the box edge, I'll give it five, six out of ten. I think you could get this sharper, <clears throat> but it's got a decent edge out of the box. Um, it'll definitely get sharper than it does out, <clears throat> excuse me, than it is out of the box, but it's it's quite usable out of the box, I think. Uh, balance point is going to be pretty close to a pinch grip. So that handle is fairly long, as you can see, um, but that kind of goes with the aesthetic of the blade being longer. But there's your balance point, and for me, that's pretty close to a pinch grip. So this knife is very nimble 
given the size. It is quite light and quite nimble given the size. And let's take a look at the cutting board profile. So what we have here is a fair, fair amount of belly or uh, curve to the edge profile in the front third of the blade. The tip is fairly high, which means I can rock that pretty high before I start wanting to dig the tip into the cutting board. And so this will rock really nicely. It kind of goes into a continuous kind of more shallow curve as you get towards the middle and back of the blade. And then there's not really a hard stop at the heel. It just kind of flows into that. Each knife can be slightly different. So you're not going to have identical necessarily on each one, but this will give you a representative view of it. So you could do some chopping and stuff with the back half of this blade. Um, I wouldn't say it's a super flat profile, but you can kind of see what you got here. It'll push, pull, cut, glide, cut, nice tip draws. You kind of have to go pretty high on the handle for that, but part of that is it's a bigger, it's a longer blade. But just a very interesting, very nice looking knife um, from this maker is putting out some quite, for, you know, quite a wide variety of options. So this is the Tsunehisa Os 8 Damascus Guto 240 millimeter knife.